So we are into the fourth episode of Diksha Free Basic Course. In the last video, we have discussed about CBD or conventional biological diversity. Within CBD, I have discussed about different protocols coming under CBD that is Katagana protocol and Nagoya protocol. Today, we will be starting our discussion about the next convention that is UNFCC or United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Out of the whole convention that is existing today which deals with environmental conservation efforts, I will say the most important one is UNFCC. The major reason is that because the Kyoto Protocol that deals with greenhouse gases come under UNFCC. So I hope you will be knowing UNFCC deals with reduction of or deals with climate change. The aim of UNFCC is to stabilize the amount of greenhouse gases in the environment that would prevent dangerous anthropogenic or human induced interference with the climate system. We know that global warming or the climate change, the major reason is the emission of greenhouse gases in a large amount. And most of these greenhouse gases were produced as, an, as a result of anthropogenic activities. So this convention deals with stabilizing the amount of greenhouse gases so as to make sure any sort of dangerous climate change phenomenon is not going to happen at present or in the future. The headquarters of UNFCC is at Bonn, that is in Germany, and also the COP or the Conference of Parties to UNFCC happens every one year. While discussing about the COP of CBD, I have told you that the COP of CBD normally takes place every two years, but when it comes to UNFCC, the Conference of Parties happens in every year. You would have read from the newspapers that UN Climate Conference okay or UN climate change conference that is normally the COP to UNFCC so the whole UNFCC convention originated from the Earth Summit in 1992 and it was open for signature within the Earth Summit and it came into force in the year 1994 so the first COP happened in the year 1995 in Berlin in Germany and I will be discussing about some of the important COPs. There is no need of studying how 20 plus COPs happen so far but you should have a clear idea regarding the important COPs. The first one happened in the year 1995 in Berlin in Germany. The third COP happened in 1997 in Kyoto that is in Japan. I hope you will be knowing the importance of Kyoto. Kyoto protocol originated from this. And the seventh COP, COP7 happened in the year 2001 in Marrakesh in Morocco. I will be discussing what is the significance of Marrakesh later. Then the COP18 took place in the year 2012, that is in Doha, that is in Qatar. Then the 21st COP took place in 2015 in Paris in France. There is an importance of this Doha conference as well as Paris conference. I will be discussing those in later. And the last COP to happen so far was in the year 2019, that is COP25 that took place in the country Chile. And the latest COP is expected to take place in the year 2020, but due to COVID issue, it was postponed into the year 2021, and that is expected to took place in the country UK. So this is about the important conference of parties. Okay, so this is about the important conference of parties coming under UNFCC. Now we will be discussing about the most important protocol that is coming under UNFCC that is Kyoto Protocol. While discussing about different COPs, I have told you that the third COP took place in Kyoto in the year 1997. Kyoto is a town in Japan. So Kyoto Protocol deals with the basic aim of UNFCC. That is, Kyoto Protocol is an international agreement, a legally binding agreement which commits the member parties for setting a internationally binding reduction targets. More simply, if you more simply, if a country sign in a Kyoto Protocol, that country is committed legally committed to reduce the amount of greenhouse gases by a particular percentage by the end of a particular year or by target year. So Kyoto Protocol was adopted in COP3 in Kyoto in 1997 and it came into force in the year 2005. The detailed guidelines on how this Kyoto Protocol has to work out was decided in Marrakesh in the year 2001 and those guidelines is known as Marrakesh Accords. So it came into force in the year 2005. 
Kyoto Protocol, there were two commitment periods. The first commitment period was from the year 2008 to 2012 and second commitment period was from the year 2013 to 2020. So you will be thinking about what comes after 2020, we will be discussing it later. So as per this protocol, during the first commitment period that is from the year 2008 to 2012, 37 industrialized countries and the European community was committed to reduce greenhouse gas emission by an average of 5 percentage by the year by taking 1990 as a base level. So, it, uh, so as per the first commitment period, it was not a binding target on all the countries but 37 industrialized countries and the European community was expected to reduce the amount of greenhouse gases by 5 percentage. So this is all about the first commitment period and the, during the second commitment period, the parties committed to reducing greenhouse gas emission was expected to reduce greenhouse gas emission at least by 18 percentage comparing to the 90 90 levels so remember in the first commitment period the target was to reduce by 5 percentage and when it comes to the second commitment period the target was to reduce by 18 percentage by the year 2020 comparing to the level of 1990. Remember the base level is same in both first commitment period and second commitment period but the rate of expected reduction is 5% in the first commitment period and 18 percentage in the second commitment period. Now we will be discussing different terms, common terms related to Kyoto Protocol. So basically we have five terms that is Annex 1 countries, Annex 2 countries, non Annex one country is then we have annex a annex b so these five terms are a bit confusing but i will be explaining those simply try to listen to those points because they are very important and there may be a chance of asking questions from these topics so first we have the concept of annex one countries annex one countries are those countries included in the industrialized countries that were members of oecd by the year 1992 that is a year in which a summit was signed and the countries of eit or economies in transition countries including russian federation baltic states several central and eastern european states so which means as for annex countries there will be set of oecd countries then there will be economies in transition countries uit countries there will be russian federation baltic state central and eastern european states so this is annex one countries so when it comes to annex two countries uh, simply annex two countries are annex one countries minus eit countries, which means all the countries of annex one countries except that of EIT countries come under Annex 2. Remember, Annex 1 and Annex 2 are not entirely different countries. Annex 1 you have OECD plus EIT, but when it comes to Annex 2, you have OECD alone. Now you will be thinking if most of the countries are same in both Annex 1 and Annex 2, what is the need for such a categorization? So in simple, Annex countries were expected to reduce the amount of greenhouse gases by 5 percentage in the first commitment and 18 percentage in the second commitment period but when it comes to annex two countries they were expected to reduce the greenhouse gases by the fixed percentage but along with that they have to provide financial uh, resources to the developing countries so as to make sure they also reduce emission or so as to reach their emission targets so when it comes to annex one countries they have to just reduce the greenhouse gas emission but when it comes to annex two countries they have to reduce greenhouse emission plus they have to provide financial resources to the developing countries so this is a basic difference between annex one and annex two countries after we have non-annex one countries or developing countries non-annex one countries or developing countries the third term is all about those countries which are not a part of annex one for example india china third world countries or the whole developing countries come under non-annex one or developing countries so we have annex one annex two non-annex one and the fourth term we have as annex a 
Annex C, eh? so it's under Annex C, eh? Kyoto Protocol have specifically stated about different greenhouse gases coming under this protocol because there are a lot of greenhouse gases in the environment but reducing all those gases are not that much important because many gases are produced in a very very low amount. So specifically Kyoto Protocol have stated about six greenhouse gases that will be coming under Kyoto Protocol and this and the name of these six greenhouse gases was stated in Annex here. So these six greenhouse gases are very important. There is a chance for asking in the question. These six greenhouse gases are we have the carbon dioxide, we have methane, we have nitrous oxide, we have hydrofluorocarbons, we have perfluorocarbons and finally we have sulfur hexafluoride. So these six are the greenhouse gases which come under Kyoto protocol I will be once again revising those gases we have the carbon dioxide we have the nitrous oxide we have the methane we have the hydrofluorocarbon we have the perfluorocarbon and we have sulfur hexafluoride so study these gases very important and finally we have the final aspect as annex B so it is under annex B the reduction commitment of parties in annex one has clearly stated so there is no need of getting confusion you will be knowing that annex one we have a list of countries that has to reduce the greenhouse gases emission by the target years but different the the target will be different for different countries because we know they have to reduce by five percentage or eighty percentage to that the level of 1990 so it will be the level of 1990 will be different from country to country so every country will be having their own targets. These targets have specifically stated in the Annex B. So when it comes to certain questions or when you read some articles regarding Kyoto Protocol, you can hear Annex 1 countries or Annex B countries. Both are almost same because in Annex B, the reduction target have been clearly specified of that of Annex 1 countries. So these are the five important terms that you have to understand with related to Kyoto Protocol. I will once again revising we have annex one countries annex one countries are the countries which have to reduce greenhouse gases by five percentage during the first commitment period and by 18 percentage during the second commitment period and it includes the countries of oecd plus eit then you have annex two countries these are the countries that comes under oecd but does not include eit the difference is they have to reduce greenhouse gases as well as they have to provide financial resources to the developing countries then we have non-annex one countries these are the list of developing countries then we have annex here which states the six important greenhouse gases coming under kyoto protocol and finally we have the annex b which states a reduction commitment of parties in annex one so that's all about kyoto protocol and unfcc we'll be discussing more about global environmental efforts in the upcoming videos thank you